What's up, y'all? It's Ricky Burchell. I'm going to be on the Corey Olis Effect with Corey Oliver, and we're going to talk about independent filmmaking, music, love, passion, all these type of things on this show. So y'all stay tuned. Yeah. Welcome to the Corey Olis Effect with Corey Oliver. Hi guys, I'm Corey Oliver. Thanks for watching The Coriolis Effect. Please hit the subscribe button below and we hope you like this episode. Hi guys, we wanted to announce that like many podcasters, we just started a Patreon account. Visit our page at patreon.com backslash The Coriolis Effect. We have five different levels of membership and offer early access to episodes, behind the scenes footage, bonus episodes, shout outs, and much more, including personal phone calls, questions and answer sessions, and live chats with Bob and me. That's patreon.com backslash the Coriolis effect. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Corey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing, doing very well. What's new with you? Well, I am determined to get rid of my jowls. Really? Why? Uh, because. You don't who, like them? Who? Yeah. So a friend of mine said to get this product. Irina has that exact same thing. She does? Yes. You go talk to her after this. I have been this. asking her because she looks phenomenal, but she's always looked phenomenal. But... She said to get this other product, which is like this oil, and you put the oil on so that this kind of goes easy. Right. And you literally do this. Oh, is that what you do with it? Yes. So. You know, I know, because one of those, I have a towel to the left of my sink, and that thing's always on it, and I keep throwing it off. Yes. And I'm going to use this for one month, and we're going to see. Here's a side profile. And we're going to see if this really works. If you're talking to your mic, they'll hear you, too. Oh, we're going to see if this really works. <laughs> this is like not my first rodeo. Sorry. Anyway, you can get it on Amazon. They're very, very inexpensive. It's a jade stone. It looks, kind of looks like a heart, which I loved. And it comes in this little box. And I'm, I am not getting paid to promote this. This is not a... Is there a brand name or it's just a jade? What's well, this called? one's called... I think it's Renee Chris Face and Body Massage Set. I just got this. I don't have... There's no set. Nothing that comes with it. Um, but... I've done it for a couple days now. Looks great. <laughs> I, I don't know what it looked like before. We'll have to do the before and after. So that's, why, before. that's why I'm doing yeah. this, so we can see if it's actually in like one month. I'm going to do it every night, and we'll see if it actually works. So how are you? I'm well. I have Not so well. new rental car now. I saw that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> As you can see, I was uh, my car was parked in a parking lot on the third floor, and I got a call from the front desk of the building saying, do you own a black so-and-so? Yeah. Uh, can you come to the parking structure? Somebody ran into it. Guy just made a wide turn, slammed my car, the black one, into the white one, which is <sighs> to the right of it, and took off. Now, and parked his car maybe about five spaces down and just took off. We have this no is idea in Vegas. Is. This is in Las Vegas. And the guy, the guy was probably drunk because a witness said he came turning around. His claim that he told the witness was, somebody hit me into this car. And you look at the guy's car, there's no damage to it at all except where he hit me. Right. Uh, but he took off and then the police came and tried to get the uh, the owner of the car and she wouldn't answer her phone or answer her door. So technically it's a hit and run, mm -hmm. even though nobody was hurt, but there was, because uh, I wasn't anywhere near the car. But they said it's private property, we can't do anything about it. So they just do a police report and the insurance takes it. And it, it's just crazy. So then that... The next day, the tow truck comes because the two cars, you can see, they were kind of like connected together. I get a call from the front desk. The guy's downstairs at the valet with the tow truck. And he said, oh, I brought my flatbed. I can't get up to the third floor. I said, well, you know it was on the third floor. He says, yeah, well, is the car drivable? And I just looked at him and I said, what did you say? He said, is your car drivable? I said, if it was drivable, why would I need a tow truck? Yeah. I could just drive it to the body yeah. shop. So, you know, it, it's a billing bill. used to sorry. do that. Here's your sign kind of stuff. But it, it just, you're a tow truck driver. What do you mean, is it drivable? Have you ever gotten to a site that they call a tow truck and the car was drivable? No. So anyway. So currently your car is stuck in Vegas it's getting in fixed. Repair. And then the problem is, as the people said, look, there's no parts. So they oh, order no. the parts, but the insurance company is very big on, we're going to pay 30 days of rental car and not 31. Right. So, and the body shop says, well, we're, we're not going to get this done in 30 days. We're not responsible if we don't get it done in 30 days oh because goodness. they said we may not be able to get the parts. So it's very interesting. Well, can they fix it to a point where you could drive it home and then I could send you to my well, guy? It's, it's not a question. That says your guy have the parts. And if your guy has the parts, they, they somebody just needs the parts. And I get it done for free because my insurance covers it. Well, minus my deductible. But it's just, uh, just very interesting. 
I know. Didn't a guy. even know. Didn't do anything. All right. Well, I'm so sorry that happened well, to you. you. So we went from a cracked rib to a busted nose to now your car. Yeah, I'm a mess. All right. Well, I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna pray Mr. extra hard. Yeah. No, your <laughs> luck's about to change. I hope so. Uh, if it well, wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Look at all, right? Well, we have a very exciting guest today. He is out of Nashville, Tennessee. His name is Ricky Burchell, and he is a producer and a director. And I'm very excited to talk to him today about just, you know, his career and, right. and what has inspired him. And he is, you know. Yeah, he does uh, films on ultra low budgets, and they look really, really phenomenal. good. Phenomenal. Yeah. Like he's, this guy's a genius, too. Yeah. So I'm very excited to talk to him today. And I like it because he, he's one of the guys who just goes out and does it. Yes. Because I... I know people who have a script. A friend of mine's son did a script. It took him 10 years to get it done. Yes. And it, he was working as a, um, a guard at Paramount. This is 10, 15 years ago. I said, dude, just do a movie. Well, I got to get... No, just do 100. I mean, Spielberg's first movie was nothing. It was a stupid student film or whatever it was. Yes. It's, you just got to keep making movies. By the way, but, speaking of Spielberg, he walked onto the, the Warner Brothers lot and occupied an office. Yeah. And... Did not have a deal. Didn't he just walked in? So blank office. I'll just hang out here, and then became you know one those of the, are the biggest. good old days. You can't do that now, but no. those are the good old days. No. Well, I'm very excited to talk to Ricky today. So. Okay. Well, then we will see you in uh, two minutes with yes. Ricky. This episode is sponsored by Brizo Healthy Fruit Tonic with manuka honey and apple cider vinegar, less than four grams of sugar, and under 35 calories per can. Each of Brizo's four flavors not only taste great, they are an excellent source of vitamin C. Brizo boosts your immune system and is great for your post-workout recovery. Brizo, available on Amazon and at Brizo.com. We want to take a minute and talk to you about ExpressVPN. Most people don't know that your internet provider, many websites, and even apps collect all of your data and then sell it to whoever's willing to pay for it. They know what websites you visited, what products you've bought, what products you looked at and did not buy, and some people can even copy your passwords and usernames and then access your private accounts. ExpressVPN encrypts all of your data and sends it from their servers, so no one knows where you are. With ExpressVPN, people may think you're in Bangladesh when you're really in Chicago. They would think you're in South America when you're really in Detroit. ExpressVPN protects you from hackers who try to steal your information, and also from spies who try to use your data for their own nefarious purposes. ExpressVPN also allows you unrestricted access to all parts of the internet. How does it work? ExpressVPN uses the best-in-class encryption. Whenever you are connected to ExpressVPN, every piece of data going in and out of your devices goes through a security-crypted tunnel and cannot be seen. Not by the government, not by hackers, not by your internet service provider, not even by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN also employs IP masking. Every device has a unique IP address, which can be traced back to you. When you use ExpressVPN, your connection gets routed through one of their 3,000-plus servers, hiding your real IP address and replacing it with one of their own. This allows you to browse the web truly anonymously. With servers in 94 different countries, you have a wide variety of places you can choose to appear from. ExpressVPN also provides 24-7 customer support with live chat, which means your question will be answered within seconds, not hours or days. It is also one of the easiest apps to use. Just open the app and with one click, you're protected. It is also physically impossible for any of ExpressVPN's servers to store logs of any customers. And ExpressVPN is a top-rated VPN provider, rated number one by CNET, The Verge, Wired, TechRadar, and many more. Just go to expressvpn.com backslash Corey to get three extra months free with a 12-month plan. This is a limited-time offer for the Coriolis Effect with Corey Oliver listeners. Again, get three months free with a 12-month plan. Go to expressvpn.com backslash Corey. With ExpressVPN, you can protect all of your digital devices, your computers, your phones, your tablets, everything and have no more border restrictions. Again, that's expressvpn.com backslash Corey. All right, let's start the show. Okay, let's start the show. What's up, Bob? Show. Thank you for sitting. How you doing there, Ricky? Yeah, I've never seen you in person, Bob, so I got to see you before we get off this. Uh, maybe, maybe. This He's not yeah. seeing you in person? No, we've only talked on the phone. Oh, my goodness. I love this. He's like, you know the that show, man. Charlie's Angels? He's like, well, never mind. <laughs> He's not. Uh, ah. Uh, we have Ricky Burchell on the show today. I'm very excited. Director, producer and director. He's got a laundry list of amazing movies that he's um, produced and directed. And we're going to talk about that and his story and his testimony and his life. And I'm very excited to get into all of that. Um, 
Okay. Welcome to the show, uh, to the Coriolis Effect. But first we have a um, word of the day. And Bob is going to give that to you. It's a phobia. And then you're going to try to guess it. So. All right, so Ricky, oh. every show we start off with a word of the day. I'm going to play it. I'm going to say it to you because I didn't punch it into my phone. Uh, you have to tell me of what this is the phobia. Is that right? This is the phobia of, of what this is the phobia. Yes. It's called libertatum okay. phobia. L-I-B-E-R-T-A-T-E-M phobia. Libertatum phobia. Libertatum phobia. Mm -hmm. Is it the fear of freedom? Close. Ooh, yeah, that's a good guess, though. Mm -hmm. Actually, almost. The fear of liberty. Okay. No. Oh. It's the fear okay. of independence. And oh, since you're okay. an independent yeah. filmmaker, it's basically the. Yeah. If I knew what the Latin was for film, it'd be uh, okay. libertadium film phobia, the in, fear of independent filmmaking. I'm pretty sure yeah. the Latin word is el filmo. El filmo? That's yes. the Spanish word. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very you're excited also, to have you on uh, on the show today. Great. And I, yeah. you are from. You're currently. You're in. Are you in Tennessee? Or I'm in Tennessee. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tennessee, which I will be going there at the end of January, hopefully. So okay. maybe I can we can meet formally. But um, and I, I would love sure. to move there someday. So you'll have to tell me all about mm -hmm. Tennessee. He's in Nashville. I got you. I'm in Nashville. Are you going to be in Nashville? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Definitely. We'll make yeah. it when you get here. So. Yeah. I'll meet you at Kid Rock's place on a Saturday night. Yeah. He has Perfect. a place. There. Kid Rock's has a really good place there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Ricky, I want to talk about you today and and your skill okay. and your your talent and just okay. Let's just start with, you know, what honestly you do and who, your any testimony you have and your, mm. yeah, I mean, I'm reading a list here of, of movies. It's, it's AM yeah. Radio, I'm terrible. The Edge of Madness, Trap City, Anybody Wears Go, Entourage, uh, Three mm. Days, Three Nights, Love 101. Mm -hmm. Love yep. 101, which stuck out for me because it was about um, That's facing- That's Love LOL. No. Oh, is it? No. <laughs> uh, it's facing modern temptations. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we're all facing. And so I mm -hmm. just love, um, and by the way, I, for those of you who don't know, the Dove Association has to back these movies, and they backed yeah. this movie, which is huge. Yes, no, yeah. mm -hmm. That's not easy to get. And so having, yeah. you know, been in some myself, they, they really do mm -hmm. monitor them. So well done on that. But let's talk about uh, you and your journey and just okay. what, what made you want to get into this business and stay mm -hmm. in this business. A lot of people want to get in, but then they get in and they're like, wait. Yeah. Um, let me just, I'll start like this. Um, I felt like I've always just been a creative individual. Um, I like to create. That's just kind of how I'm built, uh, per se. Um, and uh, I didn't think making films were possible. It's kind of like I always wanted to do it, but it's like, okay, I don't think this is possible, you know. Uh, so I kind of started getting into music. So I've been, you know, writing songs for years, um, writing songs, producing songs. I started off doing rap, and it kind of just evolved to everything. Um, so I started with that, but as technology advanced, and I began to learn about technology and learn about cameras. And, and um, so what I did was I would, be, I would write songs, and I would get um, deals with different companies, a lot of them here in Nashville. Um, but my heart was like always like, okay, I want to do film. So just by circumstance, I, um, a company that hired me to do some songwriting for them, I wrote some songs for them and produced some songs. I talked to them and said, hey, let me shoot some videos for you. And that's kind of like how the whole journey, I, and I didn't know how to do nothing. I just, and then once they kind of agreed to me, I had to go and hire a couple of other companies, like, okay, let's partner together. And so I, I kind of learned what they did. And then uh, while I was getting paid and acting like I was doing what I was doing, I was learning. And then that kind of started getting the ball rolling. And like I said, my dream was always to do films. My dreams was always to do kind of like what I'm doing now. And just slowly but surely, I just started figuring it out. Um, being independent is all I know. So um, I like to say, just hey, this is what I know. If I decide to do something, I just wake up and say, I'm going to do it and just make it happen. I know a lot of times in, um, in Hollywood, you got to pitch your ideas to people. I, I've just never been that type of guy. This is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go do it. I don't care what anybody say. I don't care if anybody likes it. This is what I'm doing, and that's it. And that's how I live my life uh, most of the time. Sometimes, it's, you know, it's like, oh, man, I want to quit. But now, you know, I get through that rough patch, and I wake up and say, what do I want to do? And this is what I'm going to do. And I just make a decision to do it. So, 
You know, it's so interesting that you say that because I'm I'm kind of like going like this because I, literally our last interview we were t we ended mm -hmm. on that note, mm -hmm. that exact note is that everybody mm -hmm. gets a thought, everybody gets an idea, mm -hmm. everybody gets a creative moment, and it's what you do with that thought if you take action, if you write it down, if you do make a phone call, or if you whatever. We all have the tools and we all have the resources, the same resources. I mean, some are different than others. But, yeah, but yeah, everything is out there. And so I love that you have followed your passion and your desire. You know, what does God say? Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And you're yeah. certainly doing yeah. that um, mm -hmm. and pursuing the gifts that he's given you. Um, what have some of the challenges, that, oh, these things always come with challenges. They do. I mean, yeah, there's definitely. bumps in yeah. the road in life and everything in careers and relationships and what are some of the bumps that you have um, encountered and how have you, um, I'll just say used your faith or, or just your, your skills, your gifts to get through it? Um, well, you know, every film has its own challenges. Um, you know, one of the first things I think people have or, or probably most independent filmmakers can relate is funding, you know what I'm saying? Um, so how do I get through it? I don't know how I get through it. I just walk, you know what I'm saying? I just be walking and something just bumps up and it's, oh, there it is. You know, um, I think even blind more faith, so. Blind faith, right? Maybe blind. I think even more so now than ever is like what I've learned is that, um, you know, you got to make a decision. Okay, what am I going to do? You know, and once you make that decision, you go start walking and things will show up when you do it, you know? So I, that's just kind of, you know, I didn't realize I was living my life like that, but there was just times I, looking back, definitely now, it's like, okay, shoot, I just decided to do things. And it was like, okay, so resources came, even though it may not have been an ideal situation. It was like, okay, this popped up. Okay, this popped up. And then, okay, this is a learning lesson. Okay, boom. So I feel like when you say, I'm going to walk in my purpose, or I'm going to walk in something bigger than yourself, bigger than yourself starts getting coming to you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, when I did my... Um, when I did Love 101, that was kind of my first movie. And, um, you know, I was like, okay, it was just me and a camera guy. I didn't even have a sound guy. Next thing you know, a guy calls me, man, I want to intern as a sound guy. And I'm like, okay, I guess I need a sound guy. You know what I'm saying? And a sound guy intern. And then, um, you know, he came on and it, then he was like, okay, we shot the movie. And he's like, okay, let's sound. I need to, I want to sound design it. It's okay. So I sat there and watched him do the whole movie sound design, and then I learned sound design by watching him do it, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay, this is, now I get it, you know? And then, you know, when I did my movie Where Is Good, it's so funny, you know, because I did the first one, so I was like, I'm, I'm implementing everything. So actually when I did my second movie, um, I had no camera guy. It was me and the sound guy. That was it. We had two people, and we shot the whole movie. And then I didn't know how to distribute the thing, but we started getting offers for deals. And then... Um, we got a deal and then, then um the, the, the companies say hey we got it. we want to do an international deal like, okay we need an m e track you know i don't a lot of in, independent filmmakers know and i'm like okay i don't know what that is they just, oh, just take this uh, so take the dialogue out and so since i already had kind of learned the sound design and all that type of stuff it was like, okay i got it and then i just mute the dialogue and send them the track and then we got a big international deal ended up going to netflix and um brazil and all, latin america just by moving you know and the funny thing is like the, i have signed a small distribution company deal first and they kind and it was just for um a domestic uh deal and they kind of try to rip me off and sell the independent the, um international rights but i found out they were selling international rights and i called the company i'm like hey y'all trying to steal my film they end up signing me for the deal and giving me an advance and all that type of stuff so, like I said, it's all for me. I just learned it's all about just okay. I'm going to move. What's my decision? Okay, this is the decision. I'm going forward. And you know, I think your mind, the universe, your body, the spirit, all start saying, okay, this is what he's going to do. He's, he starts lining up. You know, there is a scripture that says, you know, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And I take that to like people just running around in circles. Okay, I want to do it, but okay, this I can't do it. They'll find every reason and excuse not to do something. I try to say, okay every reason excuse to do something, no matter what the hurdle, no matter what the obstacle. If something comes in my way, I look at it as, okay, there may be a lesson in this, there may be something I need to learn, there may be somebody I need to meet along this way that I wouldn't have met if I didn't go through this. Um, so that's kind of how I live my entire life. I was gonna say, life. that sentence that you said that you, they tried to to take advantage of you in, in, in uh, the first deal, 
you know, yeah. sometimes God's rejection is God's protection. And yeah. so he turned and he works all things together for his glory. So he he had to get you to that point to make that phone call. <laughs> right? Yeah. If we could if we could sit up there and see the the peaks and valleys we have to go through, yeah. right? To get the end yeah. result. It's mm -hmm. we, we probably wouldn't do it, but since we don't get a front row of seat, we get to, to just go through it. It takes us to, you know, some of the most important work of your life. I mean, that's incredible. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. yep, How do so. you pick um, the projects that you that you decide to work on? How do they do they come to you? Do you just by meeting people or there's a lot of people that I myself have written a script and there's a lot of scripts out there. There's a lot of projects out there. There's a lot of talented people. Yeah, and definitely. um, I think for the most part, it's just kind of what I feel at the moment. Um, I really don't um I don't think I don't think I think too much about it. It's like um, you know, if I feel it, it's like, okay, this is the story I want to tell, this is um this inspires me. You know, I want to use this to inspire others kind of thing, you know, um, or I relate to the characters in some kind of way. It's like, OK, I really like these characters. I want to do this movie, you know, um, like I said, sometimes two people ideas come to me. I got a script and Bob knows about the script it's called Eating Me Up. And a lady came to me about, you know, dealing with bulimia. And uh, mm. right then the mm. idea started coming to me. Wow. Like, oh, man. Bulimia. Okay. And then like the, the process and then. I was inspired by these characters and I was inspired, like, you know, I had an actor in mind. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna write this for you. And then, okay, oh, then I, then I, you know, I was thinking of Karen Carpenter because I like her music of the Carpenters. I was like, okay, this, yes. this is her story. I can incorporate this. And so it just kind of just flows and then it just becomes what it becomes, you know? And um, that's really just, wow. I don't know. Every every story is, is kind of different, um, you know, but it starts with some type of motivation from either inside or even outside. It's just like, okay, I get a motivation. It's like, okay. This is what I want to tell. This is what I want to present to the world. This is what I want for me to present to the world. You know, because because making films for me, it's twofold. It's, it's like it's a, it's a job or it's, it's a business, but it's also about legacy. You know, when I leave mm. this earth, what did I leave behind? And I can say I left behind a lot of the films I wanted to tell. You know, and that's my goal. That's so powerful. That's I mean that. I can't wait to see that movie. That's not that's not been in production yet. But eat me up. It's about bulimia. That's incredible. And by the way, that's a silent, silent yeah. disease. People mm -hmm. that you wouldn't even yeah. think or know that you might be sitting down having dinner with struggle with this, you know. And so I think you're gonna um, got a, a winner winner chicken dinner, they say, yeah. <laughs> right? That's like a yeah. that's a that's an incredible thing. Um, mm -hmm. When you were a kid. I always mm -hmm. wonder about this because, you know, being a creative, I'm that way. You can't sit still for very long. You have to be doing something, right? And it, just something creative, right? Yeah. So what was that like for you as a kid? What was your outlet um, when you were younger um, to harness that energy that you have now? I think when I was a kid, um, it was just exploring different creative things. Um, I just remember even growing up, um, you know, it's so funny because people put limits on you, you know what I'm saying? Especially when yeah. you're a kid, you can't do that. And then, you know, just kind of where I grew up and, and how I grew up, you know, people put limits on me. And, you know, I, I remember, you know, wanting to play different instruments and they would tell me, like, oh, you can't play that. You're not supposed to play that. Guys don't play that. You know, black people don't play that instrument, you know, whatever excuse they could come up with. And I really like was I wanted to play the violin when I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like, like I was just always fascinated by anything creative, you know, it's just like, you know. You know cartoons or just you know anything music i mean just anything creative i was always fascinated uh by um you know that's just kind of where i live and um so do you play um, the violin i didn't because they told me certain things and i was like oh, okay i can't i guess i can't but I, in my heart it was like i'd watch the violin i'm like man that is a cool instrument it's i want to so play beautiful. that you know what i'm saying I, was, I love and i love the way it sounds still to this day um uh, but I did play the piano, play the drums, trumpet, a little bit of a little bit of everything. Um, songwriting was kind of like a major outlet I had when I was a teenager. Um, I would just sit down, and I had notebooks and notebooks of song lyrics that I would just write, um, and I think that prepared me to uh, write scripts because um, I wrote so fast um, songs. To this day, if like I need to write a song, I can. It's just like it's just like that. And even like wow. scripts, the more scripts I write, the faster I write. I think I wrote Eat Me Up in maybe three days. 
and I think I maybe did two days wow. of, of rewrites. It's like so, that's how fast I can you know get stuff done. Um, because it's like I said, I just trained myself to do it. You know, so that's a gift. I it, it definitely is a gift. I've written a script and it took me like three months. And I I remember I worked on a movie called um, Basketball. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen it. <laughs> it's an old movie. It was with Matt Stone and Trey it's Parker. A very, very, very funny movie. It's out about some of years ago, uh, but it was a, it was a great. The guys who did South Park, so it was a very, very funny movie. But they came cool. in yeah. to do to do the ADR like a few days mm -hmm. later, and they were exhausted. And I remember them saying that they had written like Dumb and Dumber for from beginning to end in like four four days. Mm -hmm. Oh, and wow, yeah. so that yeah. gift that you have that God has given you is um, it, it literally is a gift because if yeah. any of those writers out there, sometimes you get writer's block and you can't, yeah. it's yeah. a hard thing. You have to have, certain people have to have it completely quiet. Some people have to have it, yeah. you know, with yeah. uh, headphones in their ears, with music. Like what is your style of writing? How does it, how do you find yourself when you're, you're most creative? Um, Are you alone? Did you have, a lot of times I play music and then write. Um, that's that's that was one part of it. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's all it's always different. I, I, I think. I mean, let me think about that because that's that that is a tricky question. Um, I say my go to if I need to write, um, I, I play music. Um, but the funny thing about what you said with writer's block, um, anytime I get writer's block or quote unquote writer's block, that's what I'll start writing about. I'll write about writer's blog. Just anything that comes to my mind, I'm just going to write. Okay, I can't write nothing. Okay, that's what I'm writing about. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the words to say. I'm just, you know, and I, that's, that's, that's really that smart. Cool. That's a great idea. Yeah. So I'll just, I, and I, I'll just make that. that that's just kind of how I am. Okay, I'm not going to get writer's blog because if nothing comes to my mind, that's what I'm going to write about. You see what I'm saying? I'm write yeah, I do, and I think it's genius, cool. actually, because it's going to keep you going, and then you may spin off from something that you've created. You so that's actually a great, um, a great exercise, really. That that's, that's amazing. A, I got a, I got a song I wrote like that, it was, and that's how it started off. I sat down to write a song, and I didn't know the words to say, and that's what the first line was. I don't know the words to say, and then just uh, the rest of the song came, just like that. And it just came. That's amazing. So what are some of your favorite movies? I always love asking this. It seems like a really benign, generic question, but it gives it yeah. kind of gives an insight into somebody's right mind and and, yeah. and their heart. What would some of your favorite movies be? Like your top three? I'll say, I'll say this. Um, I, 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 I got to think of some other ones, but I, I'll say the movie that I felt like I wanted to become a filmmaker. I saw this movie um, when I was a kid. It's called Overboard with uh, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. And yeah, I, like, I, I love that I movie. Say, is it Rick Moranis or who's the guy? The, no, the guy who plays the, the husband of Goldie Hawn. Oh. I don't know who talking about. Yeah, I don't know who. Oh, that I'm is. thinking Captain. I'm sorry, I'm thinking Captain Jack. Yeah, yeah. no, the Overboard, Overboard was, was yes, okay. yes. They did yeah. a couple mu movies together, but that was a great movie. Yeah, and I remember like watching that movie, and I was like, man, this is just cool. And I was talking to my mom about that, and I was like, what type of movie is this? She was like, yeah, they, they call those romantic comedies. I was like, man, I like that. That was a good movie. I just, I just like the movie. I don't know why. And that, and that was like, okay, I want to make films. I want to do that. I thought that was cool. So that was one movie I really, really liked. Um, and I'll say another movie that really, really touched my heart. Um, if you guys get a chance, um, it's called The Learning Tree. Um, it's by Gordon Parks. He's the first African American film uh, director to do a movie for a major studio, um, and it was kind of like based around his life about him growing up. Um, I think in Kansas City or something like that. But I seen that movie, and it's like based in the '30s, but he sh actually shot it in this, like '69 or whatever. Um, and I, I was, I just like, I just remember watching that movie, and it's like, you know, how is that on society, Netflix? I don't know if it's on Netflix. It's probably on okay. Amazon. You know. Okay. And um, Gordon Parks, if you get the chance to look tonight. him up, yeah, he's um he's an iconic um photographer, and he kind of just like how he built his his life. His his life story is amazing. Um, just in a time where there was so much prejudice, prejudice and so many setbacks, he set his goals and he got to where he wanted to go. Mm. And like I said, he became the first African American to do a a film for um a major studio, uh, mm. nineteen sixty nine, and and. In a movie, was just okay, like phenomenal. Okay, you're doing it. You're bringing me to. <laughs> okay, that's beautiful. 
and it's and it's like it's, the movie is about like this teenager and uh growing up in the south and all he has to deal with and it was kind of like and it, and it dealt with the, the the cool part about that movie it dealt with doing the right thing based on not basing it on what society expects you to think so he's caught in a dilemma of okay i know the, the truth but if i come out it's going people it may mess up my whole community if i come out and tell people the truth about what really happened and i, I could save a man's life but i don't you know and it's like i was like man it was just very it's very impactful and it's even more impactful as watching it as an adult for me um so that would that would be number two i say learning tree and i'm trying to think of uh, the number three movie um there's so many um i don't know let me come back. I don't know, number three. I mean, there's so many movies I like, you know. I know, I it's like, a hard um, one. And this, this is what I watch as a dog. Yeah, I like the movie Hitch with Will Smith. That was a really well-written Hitch, movie. Hitch I, was that was I love movie. that yes. movie. Yeah. Like I said, I think I like ro romantic comedy style movies. It's like, I, you know, so that was kind of pissing that thing um, too. So that was really... Hmm, I, felt, like I said, wrote one. Movie. I'll have to send it on over to you. <laughs> yeah, do it. Um, yeah. So, have you ever seen a movie? I know I've asked this before, but it's an old movie uh, subtitled. It's called Cinema Paradiso. Hmm. I haven't seen that one. So I'm write I'll that send down. that Cinema to you. I'll Cinema Paradiso. It's such a beautiful story, and mm. you it's just this movie theater in Paradiso. No, you have well, well <laughs> it's just beautifully shot, and it's mm -hmm. the stories. It's just you're gonna love it. You're gonna love okay. it. It's an old old film, but it's it's a good good one. There's so many out there that are fantastic. Yeah, so um, also, another one I know I'm just giving off the is uh, with Steve Buscemi, and it's called Living in Oblivion. Living in Oblivion. Okay. Living in Oblivion, and it's it's a based. Have you ever seen it? No, but do you know why that's falling out of your ear? You I, have it upside do down. Do I have it in wrong? Probably. <laughs> um, it's 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 about the behind the scenes of a movie, an independent movie set. Okay, gotcha. And it's so good. It's an old one too, what's but it's, the name of it? it's called Living in Oblivion. It's kind of like a, I don't want to say cult because that's like a word, the, not the right word, but like a cult classic. Like everybody kind of knew about it in the industry, but didn't really, like, you know. like, the player? The player was like Yes, that, yeah. but it's, it's um, I'm going to write it down so I can send it to you. Uh, okay. It's really, really good. Um, and, and being a film director and producer. Yeah. Right. So I have a question. I have many, okay. but you know, I've worked with a lot of directors and some have been difficult and some have been wonderful and some, you know, the, the director really does set the tone for this, okay. the movie, right? They, they do. And if the director comes to the set with a smile and lets the actor mm. be free and all of that, it, it does lend itself for, for them to be a little more creative. It doesn't stifle their creativeness, right? What would you say your style of direction is? Um, I would say I, I, I think a lot, sometimes I try to come to the set and just like, you know, make people smile, maybe crack a little jokes. I don't know. Just do something fun. Um, but as you know, it can be very stressful being directed sometimes because you got people coming, hey, you got, we got to get out of here. And that's that's when um, it gets a little bit difficult. I, my personality may change then. Because okay, let's shoot. Quit playing around. Let's get, so it may change a little bit. Um, but I, um, I try to start implementing this when I direct. Is like, please don't tell me the time. Let me just shoot until I get it right. And if I absolutely need to know the time, tell me the time. But I try not to because I want to just get it right. I want it to to, to feel right. Um, as you do it more, your style evolves. Um, so this last movie I did called Anybody. I felt like you know, we were just on it. And um, I think what the style was, it was two things. It was kind of, I was trusting the actor. It was like, okay, look, this is the character. This is what we got to do. I'm trusting you. And then I was working with like my DP, my team, uh, Brandon and Brian. Um, and we were just like, okay, how can we stylistically make this look cool? You know what I'm saying? Okay, we got to, okay, this is what it is. Okay, it's night, it's day, whatever we got to do. Let's stylistically make this look cool. And we just kind of work it. And um, like I said, I would trust the actors a little bit more um because i even told the actors uh for this last movie i did i said look this is your time to shine you know what i'm saying we're gonna make it look good you gotta shine i want you guys to shine so do your best mm -hmm. and i kind of so i was trying to be a little bit more encouraging 
um, with that. And if, if I just needed to guide them a little bit, I would guide them. But, you know, I just wanted to make sure that they knew that it wasn't about me. It was about I was doing this film as I, as for them. Like, okay, this, this is your opportunity to shine. Because I almost didn't want to do the film. I was like, ah, there's too much going on in my life. And it was crazy. But I, I thought about it. It's so, okay, I, I'm doing this for these actors. So now you mm-hmm. could take this this this, uh, this story, your talent, and now you could show it to the whole world. You could use it as your demo reel, whatever you want to do with this. But I'm going to do my best as far as directing, guiding you, and lighting it, making it look good, sounds look really good. And now your turn to, to, to shine. What is anybody so, about? Anybody is a story about um, this young lady who, who her husband dies, and um, and uh, she can't get over this loss of her husband. Mm. And this, her husband is a firefighter, and he saves his kid or young man. I'll say he's a young man. He's like nineteen years old. He saves his young man in the fire, but he goes back and tries to save more people. He ends up passing away, dying in this fire. And so this young man feels guilty about this woman losing her husband. And they have like a kind of a chance meeting. When they have this chance meeting, he sees what's going on with 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 her life. Is like, okay, she can't move on now because of me. So now his little sister has a little comic book, this little cool comic book, and uh, it talks about uh, this comic book talks about bringing people back from the dead. And so he's like, okay, let me try and see if this works. And he does it, and it works. But there's a catch. She only can live for three days. So now it's like, okay, the, the firefighter comes back to life, and it's like. Okay, you only got three days to do whatever you missed to do before you 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 die, and so now it's like he's he's kind of twisted. He's like, okay, I want to stay longer, but can I? Or you got three days, so he has to make all these decisions for three days to spend with his wife. And there's a lot of other twists and turns in it because 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 if he decides to stay longer, it's going to affect this, this young guy's life. He feels the young the young guy feels like he has nothing to live for. He's like, okay, I don't have nothing to live for, you know. Mm. So I'm sad, you know, I guess they call it what survivor's remorse. So he's like, you know, somebody died trying to save me, but I don't really have nothing going on in my life. And then he realizes he had, he sees the value and and so the line, he sees value in his life towards the, the movie, but the line of it, the movie was kind of like, you know, he, he says it could have been anybody that was saved, mm. but it was you. Oh, you got live wow, your life in the <laughs> yeah. So. Now that you got, you know, your life has been spared because, you know, even during COVID, a lot of people lost their lives, you know, and it's like, okay, I'm still here. So I got a purpose. Even if I don't feel like I have a purpose, I have a purpose. And that's kind of like the message in it. It's like the, the journey was about this this guy who feels like he has no purpose. He, he sees he has a purpose now. And the wife had to learn, okay, even though your husband's gone, you got to learn to move on. You still have a purpose in life so it's, that, that's kind of like the moral behind the story yeah. with a little bit yeah, of yeah that's beautiful i love that mm-hmm. i'm gonna have to watch that yeah. uh so taking take me through the process for you um i'm always con- you know i've been on both sides i've seen actors auditions tapes i've been in a thousand million trillion of them and they're really it's hard that's the hard part really for an actor booking the jobs the easy part getting the jobs the hard part right because you just have just so many things that go on in your mind when you're standing in front of someone, uh, whether it be a Zoom video or an actual director, right? And you know you have zero to five minutes to make it (laughs) really stand out and shine so that you get picked, right? And Mm -hmm. oftentimes, you know, a lot of people, they'll they'll freeze, like, you know, Mm -hmm. just because of, they're they're phenomenal actors, but because Mm -hmm. of that pressure, it almost mm-hmm. stifles them, you know? And yeah. I've had those moments myself. But what would you say, you know, to someone who's going through that process and how do you pick someone who, you know, it's hard. You've got, you know, 100 people that try out for a role and, you know, they're all great. Equally, as, as mm-hmm. it's great. What is it that you look for in someone when they mm-hmm. come in to read? Every character, you know, is different. Um, I know it's, it's almost like a like an X Factor type of thing. I know... Um, one more dream. Um, it's so funny. This one girl, she uh, she auditioned for another character. When I, as soon as I saw, her, I said, "Oh, I want her to be so and so." And that's just kind of how it is sometimes. Um, I I try not to look at people's resumes because the simple mm. fact is, um, I don't want to know. I just want to know: Can you be this character? I don't care what you've done. You know what I'm saying? So like, resumes are kind of like I try to avoid that. You know, and I, I love you know, that. I know, 
Yeah, some of my team sometimes, like when I'm working with a team, they're like, oh, look, they, they did this, this, and this. And I'm like, okay, cool. I don't want to know. Um, part of that was I remember one time we uh, I was working with uh, – this is one of the early films I worked on. They went down this long list of resumes of this, this one lady, and they were like, oh, she's going to be great. She came in, and she was not great. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. I don't even need no, no more resumes. Let me just see if she can play the character or whoever can play the character. And that's all I kind of really need to know. Um, so my suggestion to um, to any actor or actress out there when you audition, you know, just look at the character and just take a new twist on it or, or see how you can fit this character because every role ain't for everybody. You just got to know that. It's like, okay, this role may not be for me. Um, and you just got to accept that. I mean, you just move on, you know, like, I'm not meant to make every film, you know, I'm not meant to make uh, whatever film. I don't, you know, I don't know what film I'm going to make, but right now I know certain films I'm just not going to make because that's just not me. So I just have to accept it and, and do what I do. So same thing with acting is kind of like, you know, you see the character, you see if you can fit the role, if you can, or you, even if you can't, you take it, you look at it, you study it and say, okay, I think this character is this. Let me put my little twist to it. You know, put, incorporate a little bit of your personality onto it. And incorporate what probably a little bit of what the writer or whoever sees and say okay maybe we could try it this way um i think you know acting is like just about it's about pacing it's about timing it's about breathing it's about rhythm you know it's, it, there's all type of areas it's like you know even a scene like um if it's a scene like somebody's mad and they're 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 upset you know a lot of people think just you come in there and yelling you know, but yeah. sometimes when yeah. you're quiet and whispers, like that's even more intense. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, when a woman is quiet or she don't say much or she won't whispers, it's like, okay, she's really mad. So it's like, okay, if you see the scene that says she's got to be mad, you may even take a new twist. Okay, maybe I shouldn't yell. Maybe I'll just be quiet or whisper or barely even say it. And that draws people in. It's like, okay, what's she saying? Okay, oh, wow. Mm. And you see what I'm saying? And then it's like, mm-hmm. even just move. I'm like, okay, you come in there, you say in a line, I'm, I'm going to turn around and say the line. Okay, I'll say these three lines this way, then I'm going to turn around and say this line. And it just may add a little bit something that nobody even thought of. Like, okay, cool. And that's the kind and of stuff that I think, yeah. That's so true because as, as you're sitting watching a videotape of, you know, let's just say 100 people and they're all yelling, the one that's leaning in saying, you know what, I am really, really, really angry at you. Yeah. You're going to be like, yeah. oh, there it is. There it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, great advice. That's really yeah. making it your own. I remember some of my teachers saying, just be consistent too, from beginning mm-hmm. to end. Don't break character, just be consistent. Yeah. And no matter what, you know, you've seen that movie La La Land, right? Yeah. Well, no, I haven't. I've seen pieces of it though, but yeah, I mean, it's right, yeah. Oh, Ricky, you have to see this movie. Yeah, she, got, Emma yeah, Stone yeah. gives an amazing performance, but there's one scene where she's in, and she's an actress, and she's in. Uh, giving an audition with the casting director and she is like she's she's like just about to cry and she's giving it her all and you know the um, assistant comes in and breaks everything she's like oh you've got some someone on on the line you mm-hmm. know and it's like that happens for actors right yeah. have you ever yeah. been in front of the camera uh, directing yourself you know I've never been in front of the camera directing myself well no, hold on, let me think I guess kind of. I've done some music that I've kind of been in front of the camera, uh, but it wasn't much. It was just like, okay, light it, boom, boom, all right, down to the song. But not really. I haven't done that um, not on a bigger scale. I may play like a bit part or something in a movie, just like, okay, I'm going to stand right there, walk by, hey, what's up, and keep walking. But that's about it, uh, you know. Yeah, you um, should do the uh, the Hitchcock thing where you walk, you know, two seconds in every movie, yeah. just walk in and out of it. Yeah. Yeah. The Stan Lee thing. Can- yeah, you, most movies you see me somewhere in it. Um, I don't think the last few productions I was in it. Um, AM radio, I play a voice, a caller, caller in. Um, I don't think I'm in. No, I'm not in anybody, but I'm in. Uh, I'm in. Like, you, you in see one more dream? Time. No, I'm not in one more dream either. <laughs> I'm not in one more dream. Okay. So, but yeah, sometimes, like I said, but it's nothing. Nothing. Uh, I haven't done nothing. Uh, Big. I, I was thinking about doing uh, partially doing something with uh, eating me up. There's a bartender in there. I thought about you playing him or even the main character. I thought about it. I was like, maybe, but I, I don't know yet. You know, we'll see. You know. So you know that movie resonates with me when, when I was in high school. Uh, one of my friends had um, bulimia, bulimia and anorexia, and I just 
remember it being so, you know, hard on her body. And, you know, it's not just hard on your body physically, but mentally. And it's just such a necessary movie. It, I can see it helping a lot of people. There's a new restaurant in uh, Las Vegas called Bulimia's. Oh, wow. It's huge. Okay. You know, don't listen to Bob. Bob likes to cut a rug. Um, oh who's God. your favorite cut actor? Cut a rug means dancing. You know that, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, when you cut a rug, it's you dance. Oh, you can it really, is? Oh, yeah, because okay. you're cutting the rug by dancing. Sorry. Yeah. What is, um, who's some of your, who's your favorite actor? That is interesting. Um, I'm going to shout out, I'm going to shout out uh, my friend, my good friend Omar. I worked with him on Aiden Radio. Mm. The reason I like him so much, Omar Gooding, if, you, if anybody doesn't know who he is, Omar Gooding, he's the brother of Cuba Gooding uh, Jr. Mm -hmm. I know father. Omar Gooding. He, the cool thing about that is because I worked with him and I seen his talent. I was just blown away. I was like, whoa. Um, and I am, let, me, let me tell you what AM Radio is about. It's about an uh, AM Radio DJ. He's going through a little crisis in life and he um, he's uh, he's on his radio ranting, ranting and raving. Most of this movie takes place at the radio station. I remember uh, day one of shooting him, we uh, you know, we were getting ready to shoot the scene and I think it's five pages. We set up the camera, set up the lights, you know, me and Omar talked just for a second. I said, like, okay, you know what it is, you know what to do. All right, cool, roll camera, roll our right, action. Boom, he did five pages just like that. And I was like, and he killed it, he nailed it. I was like, whoa, this guy wow. is, I mean like, okay. All right, cool. So after the second angle, we, we shot and we just kept on and he was just nailing it. Five, I mean, he'd do five, seven pages just like that. You know, you know, he told me it was because of like, you know, doing a lot of sitcoms that he had to do it like that. But I was just like kind of blown away and he knew he had a great rhythm. So anybody get a chance, watch that movie and watch Omar's performance. Um, so I could just say I like Omar as an actor because I personally see what he can do and how talented he is right there in person, live on the spot, you know. And, so and not just talented, favorite. but prepared, like for a director and a producer, you know, time is money and you're working yeah. on somebody else's dime. And so when you when an actor comes to the set and they're prepared and they're, you know, they mm -hmm. just know what they're going to do and they bring it. That's like word spreads yeah. and everyone wants to work with yeah. you. Right. Definitely. Yeah. But you, but you know, there's like I said, a lot of other talented, like Denzel, and you know, there's so many talented actors. It's yeah. Like, no, I love you know, Armar. He's fantastic. Yeah, he, yeah, he's what great. about an he's actress? Great. Um, right off top, let me see who I like. Um, I do like that girl. What's that girl's name? Uh, the Hunger Games girl. What's her name? Um, oh, Jennifer Lawrence. Starting, Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, I think she's very, very talented. I was like, okay. You know, I've seen a couple of her movies and I'm like, okay, she has, she has a lot of different ranges that she can do. So I, I think she's mm -hmm. very talented. You know, hopefully I can work with her one day because I, I see the talent that she has. So mm -hmm. yeah. Silver Linings uh, Playbook. That was a great movie. That, Did you see that? That's, yeah. that's when I was like, okay, this girl got some talent. Because I've seen The Hunger Games and when I seen her play that character, I was like, oh, yeah, she's good. That was a so, good move for her to do that. That was a, yeah. Watch her in uh, the Bill Engvall show. It was a sitcom with Bill Engel about his family. And she was on it for about five years playing his teenage daughter. And from that to The Hunger Game, her acting increased a thousand percent. Really? I didn't see she that. She wasn't the best actress on The Engel Show. She yeah. was kind of new and she would, she kind of talked her lines like Tina Yothers from um, uh, Family Ties, mm -hmm. where you could tell she was reading the card. But she all of a sudden, when Hunger Came out, she became like this great, great actress. Yeah, she yeah. is. She's fantastic. Yeah. She's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, mm -hmm. Ricky would like to work with you. Yeah, Jennifer, if you're As out there. With the rest of Hollywood, Atlanta, Canada. My, Ireland, myself, yeah. Westlake Village. We all would. We all would. And I got a fit for you, Jennifer, so if you're watching, I'll have a for you. <laughs> so. so what's up next for you? Eat the... Um, the... Yeah, film-wise, film this is going to be eating me up. I got an audio series that I'm coming out to. Um, it's going to be called uh, Strap City Audio Series. Um, it's about, um, I'm sorry, Ricky. Lawyer. It's called what? It's called what? Crap City. Crap City. Craft. Craft. Trap. 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 You heard him right the first time. <laughs> yeah. What? What did you think he said? I didn't. I didn't know. I couldn't hear him. Trap City. Trap Wait, City. you have that yeah. here? Yeah, I have that. Okay, that's why. I did a movie called Trap City, and then I'm yeah. doing a, a series it's called an audio series, and I'm going. To, I'm working on um, doing that. Um, um, I'm working on it, trying to get that going next month, and then um, I'll do um, eating me up. Those are kind of like my two 
and editing uh, anybody, you know, I'm trying to get that done. So, because the shot is just not edited yet. So, you know, me and Bob been talking about some stuff like that. So, and are you from Nashville? No, I'm originally from New Jersey, born and raised. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm New from Philadelphia, Jersey. Jersey. How do you like Nashville? I keep saying I want to move to Nashville. I have a lot of friends in Nashville. Oh, for real? Okay. I mean, it's cool. I mean, I love it. Anywhere I go, I love it. I'm happy anywhere. So I go anywhere. You know what? I, you know I, what that means is that, and I have a friend of mine, um, Susan Weiss. She used, used to always tell me, "Bloom while you're planted. Bloom where okay. you're planted." There you go. Yeah. There you go. See, I bring the joy wherever I go, so it don't matter. If I go, you know, that's that's me. I'm bringing the joy. I'm bringing the peace wherever I go. I so, love that. What made you go to Nashville? Uh, school. I went to school out here. Um, okay. There's a school called Middle Tennessee uh, State University. They have a big recording industry um, school. And, um, you know, I seen it and it was like, okay, I just want to go. I felt like I wanted, I needed to be here and I came and, uh, you know, I just kind of been here ever since. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, I'll go anywhere I've been in, you know, a lot of times I've done, I'll go to Atlanta, shoot, I'll go New York, LA, any, anywhere I'll shoot, you know, anywhere. So I I'm going well, I'd certainly love to work with you one day, Ricky. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, okay. I have, well, I'm at, Bob's working on a list of words, but we're going to go through that. Um, yeah. I would love to know three words that describe you. Okay. You want me to come up with three words? No, me? we're not doing that just yet. Yeah, you can do that. We'll just wait for that. She wants three. W describe yourself by using three words, not in three words. Oh. Three words that describe you. Hmm. Now, how do you want the description? Physical or into, uh, you know, or mental or whichever physical? three best describe you. Hmm. What best describes Ricky Burchell? Hmm. Or right, if we're talking physical, I'm tall, dark, and handsome. So let's leave it right there. <laughs> That's three. Um, I think I'm um, I'm dedicated, loyal, um, honest. Um, that's that that'll be. Those more... are three really great qualities yeah. that are very difficult yeah. to find. Yeah. I think loyal determined. is very difficult to find. I can say I'm determined. Definitely determined. Um, you know. Um, I mean, so many words, you know, you know, grateful. I try to be grateful, um, giving, mm. you know, loving, you know, thoughtful. I have a very important question for you. Those are all, yeah. I'm going to go with those first three. Yeah. Do you like to karaoke? <laughs> Say yes. There's a place out that, okay, so our friend Hillary Williams, who came on the show, she told us about a karaoke place in Nashville called Santa's. Yeah, I went there. Okay. okay. You did? Yeah. When I was in Nashville in August, we went there. Oh, this isn't about you. No, same. <laughs> Have uh, you been there? Karaoke. <laughs> What's that? I'll say that. I haven't done karaoke, but I'm willing to do karaoke. Okay, I when I come in the end of January to Nashville, we're going to Santa's. Okay, cool. Now, can you rap? Because that's what kind of karaoke we oh, need Corey to Oh, Corey freestyles all day. Corey, do a freestyle rap right now. Um, I said a hip, a hop, a <laughs> to the <laughs> hip, hip, hop, you don't uh, stop the rocket to the bang, bang, boogie, up, jump the boogie on the rhythm of the boogie to beat. I don't know if those are the right words, but I used to sing those when I was a kid. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a great rapper. I have written music and recorded it, and I used to be in a band, but I'll tell you, you know, people think, oh, rap's so easy. No, no, yeah. it's so yeah. hard. It's so, so hard. Like, it's, yeah. there's a yeah. rhythm and a gift and a talent mm -hmm. to rapping. Yeah. yeah. There's a whole lot more lyrics than regular songs or other songs, I'll say that, because it's like, you look at a rap song, it's three, four pages of just new lyrics, and a lot of other songs are like, okay, chorus, bridge, and it, you know, so I, I write them both all, so I trust me, rap is very hard, especially when it's writing, because you gotta write a lot more lyrics, so. And you're getting it all in, like, you know, there's like yeah. six sentences in one, <laughs> right? Yeah, in yeah. one, yeah, yeah. no, well, that's I, great. I it, you know, yeah. What's your so. favorite style of music? I mean, you're in Nashville, so you it. must love some kind of country, right? I can't say I love country. I like aspects of country. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm really eclectic. If you, if you see, if you ever get a chance to hang out with me, you'll see I have so many diverse friends, so many diverse 
taste, so yeah, many diversity. Right. Like, I'm very, very eclectic. You know, you can't put me in a box. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, I tell people, hey, there's men, there's women, and there's Ricky. It's just like I'm just who I am. You know what I'm saying? It's like Aww, I'm just like I'm eclectic. You know, that's all I can say. So um, depends on the day, depends on the mood. Um, I was listening the other day. Um, the song, uh, the Pina Colada song. I like that song. I mean, I love this. Oh, song. Escape. You know, then, yeah. We were, yeah, we were just talking about that the other day with Carlos. Yeah, and then, you know, but then I love hip hop. That's what, you know, I grew up on. So it's like, okay, I like, you know, Run DMC and LL Cool, you know, I, and 50 Cent. I, I mean, I love it, you know, and then, you know, been doing Christian music for a while. So, okay, I love Toby Mac. And D, so, like I said, I'm so eclectic yes. when, it types, when it comes to uh, music and stuff like that. So. You know, can't pinpoint. You should go check out the Newsboys. They're they're in Nashville, right? Yeah, they are yeah. in Nashville. I met, I met a couple of them uh, before too. So you know, there was actually a show they did. Um, what's called um the Born Again TV show. Um, I did some music for that show. Um, a friend of mine, Mari White, produced it, and she called me about producing some music for that show. So you know, was but, that yeah. the Jesus music? No, they did a they did a TV a, a, um what is called a, um reality show called Born Again. When oh, the album okay. Born it was again, called Born Again, yeah. Yeah, the album Born Again came out, and they had this reality show, and my friend of mine was producing it, and she asked me to uh, make some music for it. So, Yeah, mm -hmm. they're great. I love them. They're all wonderful people and okay. good people. And, um, Mike, Michael Tate is in the group now and stuff. Like He used to be in Jesus Talk, now he's in there. So, yeah. Have mm -hmm. you seen the movie The Jesus Music? I haven't seen that, no. You got to watch mm -hmm. it. It's okay. really it's good. good. And it's... Right? It's a documentary and it takes you, be, you know, back to kind of the mm. trajectory of how it all began and the movement with Billy Graham and everything. And they interview a lot of artists and it's it's interesting. You know, it's a lot of stuff we didn't know, you know, but I, I always love documentaries like that because we see one thing in the media. And then mm. when projects like this come out, you get to see mm. the reality wow. of what was actually going on then, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool that a lot of people stepped up for it and and uh, made it happen. They're, 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 those aren't easy to coordinate with all those schedules and stuff. So, yeah. Um. All right, Ricky, we are going to do the word association test. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Thank you. First time. Can I get a ding or a clap? <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. Oh, that's really a lot. Um. I'm going to say a word. You're going to say yeah. a word, just like one word that comes to mind immediately. Um, it's coming back to my rapping skills now. Right, skills. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, mm -hmm. You can rap it if you want. Uh, music. Oh, man. Music. Uh, I don't know what the, uh Hip hop. Filmmaking. Independent. Tennessee. Nashville. Hope. Life. Hmm. Directing. Love. Hmm. I love that. I love that. You know, if you love what you do, you'll never spend a day working in your life. So that's yeah. wonderful. Um, yeah. People. Love. Hmm. Love. Friendship. Trust. Mm. Good one. Mm. That is good. Those are that's that that concludes the test taking portion of this show. Well done. Um, yeah, flying colors, and. Um, yeah. Who is uh, somebody who inspires you the most? I think um, that all depends on the, the, um, the different things in life. You know, if it's like if it's filmmaking, that can vary from day to day. Um, like I said, I, I think like Gordon Parks, he was he's a, he's a great inspiration. Just seeing what he went through. Um, you know, Spike Lee, I like his style, some of the style of writing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, even I, I like um, Sylvester Stallone, his story of, you know, um, so he inspires me. So it's like, you know, just different aspects of different things inspire me, you know, um, for then, then, you know, 
there's another side to me that has a heart for, um, you know, feeding the homeless and helping people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there's other people who inspire me on that side of it. Um, um, so it's like I have a filmmaking side of me and I have music side of me. Then I have like this, this, this heart for helping, you know, less fortunate people and, um, and all different people inspire me for, for all different types of those, you know? So, so. Well, there's scripture, whatever you do not do for the least of me, you do not do for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. mm -hmm, exactly. that's, those are words to live by, right? I mean, if we just help yeah. others, mm -hmm. then we're, we're making the world yeah. a better place. Yeah. Um, if you had anything, speaking of the world, <laughs> mm -hmm. to say to the world right now, what would you want to say? In its you current talk state of thirty-seven listeners, what would you say? I, I think, okay, what I would tell the world right now is, um, you know, take take some time, close your eyes, and get a vision of where you want to go in life, and um, don't get no, don't let nothing from the outside influence you. No TV, commercials, parents, friends, nobody. Just get by yourself, close your eyes, and get a vision where you want to go in life. If it takes 10, 20, 30 minutes or whatever, an hour, sit and just do that. And then once you open your eyes and you say, okay, this is where I want to go in life, you write that down and say, I'm going this way. And don't let nothing distract you, deter you, just go. And that's what I would tell the world is because, you know, we live in a social media world. We live in a TV commercial world. We live in all these types of things and they influence every aspect of our lives. And we have to get away from that from, from a time and say, what do I want to be? Who do I want to become? And you got to get quiet to do that. And once you know that, then you say, I'm going forth to do this and I'm going forth to be this. And that's what I would, that's what I would tell I encourage the world. I think that's great advice. I think silence mm -hmm. the noise. And, you know, we, there's a saying we talk about, Bob and I and, and uh, other people on the show, garbage in, garbage out, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. I, I, that's yeah. great, uh, excellent advice to just take some time mm -hmm. for yourself and, and daily affirm in your own mind mm -hmm. what it is that you want to do, the goals that you have mm -hmm. and, and that mm -hmm. what that looks like. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. your heart, your your story, your your movies, your gifts to all of us. I can only hope to be on one of your sets one day. And and um, I look forward to seeing your next project. That that uh, just sounds wonderful. So thank you. Um, you're going to be in Tennessee Ricky. for a week. Maybe you can write a movie and do the acting while you're there. I know, there right? Yeah. We'll do a short on our. Um, well, you know, Selena Gomez knocked out that whole entire music video on. The iPhone. Her iPhone. I'm like, you yeah. can shoot so many things. Maybe I should make a, a music video with Ricky on my song, I'm Somebody's Daughter. Hmm. Yeah. I will, but I will definitely, when I'm there, I'll let you know. And I'm going with a friend of mine. So, um, and we'll see yeah. if you're around and, and, and Bob, say hello get, get in person. Yeah, no, yeah. Get my number from Bob and we'll, we'll connect. So. Okay, so. Ricky. Well, I can't thank you enough for your time today. I know that's valuable and and just keep shining. We're so grateful to have you on our show. Great. I'm great. I'm and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. So Thank you, you too. And we're out. The Coriolis Effect is produced by JS Productions. Producers Corey Oliver and Bob Victor, host Corey Oliver, and editors Bob Victor and Cade Bonsall. Hi guys, I'm Corey Oliver and thank you for watching the Coriolis Effect. We hope you enjoyed the previous episode. Here are some more episodes you might enjoy. Hit the subscribe button below and have a great day.